Hey y'all, Beardo here. You're watching my new Minute, and it's time for more Wednesday comics. This is a very, very small Wednesday comic book haul for me this week. I only got three books, one of which is a reprint. <laughs> um, so, um, not a whole lot to tell you guys today. However, the books that I did get were really excellent, and I'm very excited to share them with you. So we're going to kick it off with the reprint. And then uh, I have ordered the other two books from least favorite to most favorite. Um, but really that just means runner up to pick of the week and pick of the week because both the books were fantastic and there were only two of them. So anyway, starting off with the reprint, I did pick up this week's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, color classics from IDW. This is the third issue in the series and in which they basically reprint um, I don't know how far they're going to take it. Hopefully the entire series of the original Mirage um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. This particular issue, um, we get to see Splinter is missing, basically. The Turtles come back from having fought the Mousers in the last issue, and Splinter's gone, nowhere to be found. There's Mousers, parts strewn everywhere, so it's been some kind of a tussle. They catch up with April O'Neil, and there's this big car chase because the police mistake them for some robbers that are in a vehicle that's identical to April's. And uh, that's pretty fun. That takes up actually the majority of the book. And then we get an epilogue. And in the epilogue, we kind of find out what happens to Splinter. And we get the first appearance of the Utroms in this, uh, which is pretty fun. Um, other than that, not a whole lot actually happens in this issue. I mean, we, it's basically all set up. We get, you know, the Turtles going off with April and then Splinter's kind of off on his own, and then we threw in some Utroms to make it creepy and weird and interesting. So anyway, fun issue. Always enjoy these. If you're not getting this, if you haven't already picked up the original Turtles run in some form or another, this is a great way to do it. I know that there's been some controversy with the coloring in this uh, and that it's kind of a little too digital. Um, however, this issue, seemed, they seem to tone that down actually quite a bit. There are still some of those sort of like two-tone you know, yellow and green sort of backgrounds or whatever, but um, overall I felt like they did work at taking the edge off of that a little bit with this issue. So we'll see if they continue with that trend in issue four, if that's just sort of a fluke of this issue. But anyway, good issue nonetheless, go pick it up. All right, next up we have the runner-up to pick of the week, which was Swamp Thing. Now. Um, I said at the end of the Animal Man review last week that, you know, next issue around we are going to see Animal Man and Swamp Thing in the same page, uh, or on the same panel, in the same book. That happens with Swamp Thing number 11. Uh, at the very end of this issue, spoiler alert, it's not really a spoiler I don't think, but spoilers. I hope you fast forward it, I'm not going to get yelled at for spoiling this we see Animal Man and Swamp Thing on the same page. <laughs> so anyway, um, that was kind of exciting. Uh, we get basically Swamp Thing making his comeback. He is rescued by the Parliament of Trees, and he faces off with Anton Arcane, which was pretty exciting. Um, I mean, this is all just building up to Rot World. And I mean, it has been in past issues, but this issue more than ever, it just sort of feels like it's here, it's so close, and you're just kind of waiting for that at this point. So that's why this book didn't necessarily get pick of the week, but it was a very entertaining issue. A lot of good, crazy stuff happening here. Um, one thing I do want to talk about with this issue is the artwork by Marco Rudy. Uh, Marco Rudy's been doing the artwork on Swamp Thing since issue three, I think. Uh, he's done, you know, Yannick Paquette will do pages one and two and 19 and 20 and then Marco Rudy will fill in the entire bulk of the issue. This I think is probably the first issue in which Marco Rudy is working alone and since we had uh, Frank Francisco Francavelli on last issue as a filler artist they really sort of let Marco Rudy approach this from his own perspective in the way that they let Francisco Francavelli do it in last issue and so what you get is not very Yannick Paquette like but really Marco Rudy like and that is something I really really enjoyed seeing uh, I thought Marco Rudy actually really knocked this book out of the park considering that I wasn't really expecting very much from him um, he toned down the sort of crazy paneling with all you know where the panels are broken up by you know, oak trees and vines and flowers and things like that. There are maybe one or two splash pages like that in this book, but mostly it's a much more traditional paneling style, much more akin to the Francavelli that we got last month. 
and the actual you know illustration of the characters and you know Anton and Swamp Thing and all that stuff really was very spot on. I really liked his art, and honestly, if we just had Marco Rudy on this book, if he could consistently deliver this kind of art month to month. I'd be totally fine with that. So, anyway, something to think about. I'm guessing we're going to get uh, filler artists on Swamp Thing and Animal Man here, basically through issue zero. I'm guessing Yannick Paquette and um, the replacement of Travel Foreman. <laughs> Sorry, I'm totally blanking on his name. I apologize. Steve Pugh. Uh, I'm guessing that they're just hard at work on Rot World right now, and they are... Uh, hopefully going to have all that artwork done so that for Rot World we get one cohesive total story from them. That would be really exciting. So anyway, filler artists in the interim. Hopefully it pays off when we get to Rot World. All right. Pick of the week. You knew it had to be pick of the week. I mean, what else could it be? Batman, issue number 11. The conclusion, the epic finale, as they say on the cover, of the Court of Owls storyline. Now, I absolutely love this issue. I was expecting this to sort of be a no-holds-barred fight with, um, you know, Batman and Lincoln March. And we get that at the beginning. And there's some pretty great sort of, you know, fight choreography in this. It's very, very well realized by Greg Capullo. No big surprise there. And then we get the inclusion of the rocket pack device <laughs> and I rolled my eyes I thought oh god and I'm gonna spoil this here but Lincoln Lincoln March has a rocket pack built into his suit and I just thought that was incredibly cheesy and a little bit like oh boy here we go but it's not a rocket pack to be cool it's a rocket pack that is used very specifically as a literary device for Lincoln March to basically drag Gotham, or dra sorry, excuse me, drag Batman across Gotham and over Gotham and sort of see the way Gotham City is from his perspective and how he saw it in his uh, orphanage as he was growing up. And it was very, very interesting. It created a really, really good parallel um, or mirror image, as they sort of explained it in here, between Lincoln March and Bruce Wayne and how. You know, they're the same and yet completely opposite. And it was just superb writing on the part of Scott Snyder. It's really an excellent testament to, you know, what makes comic books great because, you know, you get cheesy rocket packs in comics. But if you're a good writer, you can take a rocket pack and, you know, use it as a device to really further the story, further the characters, and create a very interesting um, situation that can play out throughout the majority of the issue. So anyway... Fantastic writing from Scott Snyder. Very, very satisfying ending. There is still a question as to whether or not Lincoln March really is Thomas Wayne Jr., uh, and they're not going to answer that question uh, with this issue, but they do leave it in a very satisfying place, and I was very, very happy with what they did with it. Also, we get the conclusion of the backup story, which is just sort of a, a very nice epilogue to what is already an epilogue in the main story. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say about Batman. It was a fantastic issue. Um, do I have to tell you to go pick this up? I sincerely doubt it. Anyway, so that's everything I got. We got Batman, we've got Swamp Thing, and we've got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reprint. And that's everything I picked up. So this is going to be a really, really short minutiae minute. Um, I do want to say, stu uh, tune in this weekend. I will be posting the probably the last countdown to the dark knight rises video um it is going to feature some sort of preludes um and you know stuff that sort of happened shortly before nightfall um so i'll talk a little bit about that when we get to it hope you enjoy that video when that comes up and then also one last special note to ghost critic your bag is about I'm going to say two-thirds of the way full. <laughs> I've got a couple books. I, I went shopping, found a couple good things. I put a lot of thought into this. There is a theme to this bag, which you will find out in just a moment. Um, and once I knew the theme, there were a couple books I knew I wanted to put in there. So I got what I could from my local comic book shop. I ordered a couple other ones online. So, because um, I wasn't willing to give you my copy, sorry. <laughs> so those will be arriving shortly. As soon as I get those, I will be sending the package to you. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what's in the bag, but I will give you a hint. I 
I hope you're excited. All right, that's all I got, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you for the Dark Knight Rises video.